Hello, in this video, we're going to look at pulmonary circulation, and we're also going to talk about the causes of pulmonary hypertension. So here we have the heart, and the heart has four chambers. Here we have the right side, uh, which is composed of the right atrium and right ventricle. The right side of the heart receives deoxygenated blood from circulation. The right ventricle will then pump this blood through the pulmonary trunk, which will branch into the right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery before branching even more within the lungs. The lungs will reoxygenate the blood. This newly oxygenated blood uh, will then return back to the heart via uh, the left and right pulmonary vein. The pulmonary veins will return the oxygenated blood to the left atrium. The blood from the left atrium will then join with the left ventricle before being pumped around the body. Let us now look at the lungs and see the structures responsible for reoxygenating the blood in a little bit more detail. Here is a cluster of alveoli, sacs. Now the alveoli are the ends of the respiratory tract basically, and here is one alveolus. So you can imagine, here is the pulmonary artery coming from the right side of the heart, bringing in deoxygenated blood in blue. The pulmonary artery will branch again and again before arriving at uh, these terminal alveoli. The arteriole is now uh, capillary uh, to these alveoli. Here, the carbon dioxide from the vessels is, ab is absorbed into the respiratory tract and exhaled out, while Simultaneously, oxygen is inhaled and reoxygenating the blood vessels. The newly oxygenated blood supply will now return to the left side of the heart via the pulmonary venules, which will eventually join with other vein venules to form the main pulmonary vein. Let's now zoom in and focus on one alveolus. Here is a cross section of an alveolus, and here is the heart. Again, as we mentioned, the right side of the heart will pump deoxygenated blood through the pulmonary arteries into the lung. The pulmonary artery will branch until it forms capillaries for each of these alveolus or alveoli in the lung. The blood is reoxygenated. This newly reoxygenated blood will then return to the heart via the pulmonary veins. It enters the left atrium of the heart before going into the left ventricle, and the left ventricle will then pump this blood to the systemic circulation through the aorta. When we measure blood pressure, we are actually measuring the systemic circulation pressure really, not the pulmonary circulation pressure. The normal systemic circulation pressure, or the normal blood pressure in our body, is about 120 on 80. The pulmonary circulation pressure, on the other hand, is 24 on 12. Another difference between systemic and pulmonary circulation is the response to low oxygen levels. For example, in systemic circulation, a decrease in oxygen supply will cause systemic vasodilation, and this is to increase blood flow and thus hopefully increase oxygen supply to the systemic organs. However, in the pulmonary circulation, a decrease in oxygen, a decrease in ventilation or supply to the body means that the pulmonary circulation will constrict. They constrict to compensate for the decrease in ventilation. There is normal blood flow but poor ventilation. A pulmonary shunt occurs. The volume of blood in the pulmonary vessels at any one time is about 1 liter, of which less than 100 mils is in the pulmonary capillaries. Pulmonary capillary pressure is about 10 uh, millimeters mercury, whereas the oncotic pressure is 25 millimeters mercury, so that an inward directed pressure gradient of about 15 millimeters mercury keeps the alveoli free of all but a thin film of fluid. When the pulmonary capillary pressure or the pulmonary arterial pressure is more than 25 millimeters mercury, pulmonary congestion and edema result which really means pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension or pulmonary arterial hypertension is when the pulmonary arterial pressure is above 25 millimeters mercury at rest or 30 millimeters mercury on exertion. When there's a buildup of pressure, let's just say from edema, part of this fluid in the interstitium, the fluid can be drained via the lymphatic system back to the heart. However, oftentimes in pulmonary hypertension, 
the lymphatic system is not great enough to return the pulmonary vascular pressure back to homeostasis. So what causes pulmonary hypertension? So now let's briefly talk about pulmonary hypertension and its causes. Before that, we first need to know what four values or factors can influence the pulmonary arterial pressure. These are the cardiac output, the pulmonary artery and thus the pulmonary arterial pressure, pulmonary vascular resistance and left atrial pressure, also known as a pulmonary venous pressure. To keep things simple, Pulmonary hypertension is when your arterial pulmonary pressure is above 25 millimeters mercury at rest or 30 millimeters mercury with exertion. Now, many things affect your pulmonary arterial pressure. And because of this, many things can cause pulmonary hypertension. The pressure of the pulmonary artery is equal to the cardiac output multiplied by pulmonary vascular resistance plus left atrial pressure. So basically, any rise in cardiac output, any rise in pulmonary vascular resistance, or any rise in left atrial pressure will cause an increase in pulmonary arterial pressure, which means will cause pulmonary hypertension. So let's draw out what each of these mean. Here is the lung, which is the alveoli, and here is the right side of the heart, which is pumping into uh, the lung deoxygenated blood through the pulmonary artery. The pressure of the pulmonary artery here is the pressure in the pulmonary artery, which again, uh, when high, will really tell us if you have pulmonary hypertension or not. The pulmonary artery will branch and form capillaries supplying each alveoli. Between the alveoli and the capillaries is the space called the interstitium. Cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped by the heart in one minute. Pulmonary vascular resistance is a pressure in the pulmonary circulation. Then the capillaries will form the pulmonary veins and will return oxygenated blood to the left side of the heart. The other important factor affecting pulmonary artery pressure is the left atrium, here where the pulmonary veins drain into. And of course, the left side of the heart will pump oxygenated blood uh, to the systemic circulation. This is also your cardiac output from the other side. Now to help diagnose pulmonary hypertension, you really perform uh, a right-sided cardiac catheterization, which if the value is above 25 millimeters mercury, at rest, it is diagnostic of pulmonary hypertension. You can also use a transthoracic echocardiogram to help diagnose pulmonary hypertension. The pulmonary wedge pressure can help assess the left side of the heart. Causes of pulmonary hypertension from the left heart include mitral valve disease, which will increase your left atrial pressure. Left-sided heart failure, which will also increase your left atrial pressure and so increase pulmonary artery pressure, which uh, will then lead to pulmonary hypertension. Hypoxemia due to different lung diseases can also cause pulmonary hypertension. These include uh, COPD, interstitial lung disease, obstructive sleep apnea, which all will increase pulmonary vascular resistance. Pulmonary embolism is another important cause. This is where you get occlusion of the pulmonary artery branches and or capillaries. This will increase pulmonary vascular resistance and so increase pulmonary artery pressure and so will lead to pulmonary hypertension. There are also miscellaneous causes such as granulomas as a result of sarcoidosis or connective tissue disease. They essentially can cause obstruction and reduce perfusion to the lungs. And so as a consequence, they will sort of increase the pulmonary artery pressure causing pulmonary hypertension. So I hope um, this video on pulmonary circulation and just an overview of the causes of pulmonary hypertension made sense. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.